What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Pure Evil MMA. I'm your host, as always, Evil Eddie from MyMMANews.com. And today we have a very special guest joining us here today, Trisha Cicero. What's going on, Trisha? How are you doing? Not much. I'm doing great. Great to talk to you again. How are you doing? I'm doing really good. I'm really excited for, uh, you know, the, the rest of this year. And just to catch everybody up, me and you bumped into one another recently at uh, the Cage Titans fight out in... Plymouth, Rhode Island, and that was a far trip for me. It was like a three and a half hour ride. You're coming all the way up from Florida. You know, how, how was the trip up here? And, and did you enjoy the scenery? Because that place goes crazy. Uh, it was great. You know, um, it was a really great experience. I have nothing but great things to say about Cage Titans. Uh, everybody was a great, you know, pleasure to work with. Um, the views were great. I mean, people were nice. So, yeah, it was it was good. You know, it was a, a long trip, but it was very nice. So, Not that still a good trip. <laughs> you actually fought O'Hearn, who I was literally blown away by her performance there. Uh, you know, what, did anything surprise you about her performance? This was a really good debut for her against a really tough opponent in yourself. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. I was siding with you. I was like, this is a great fight for Trish. And then she goes in there, and I was really shocked at uh, her performance against somebody like you. Uh, what did you think uh, uh, of her performance? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I I had, the, you know, watched her videos, but I knew that she hadn't fought uh, maybe in almost two years, maybe a little less than that. Um, and, and it looked like she really put everything together, like the little things she had done right in each of her amateur fights leading up to this pro debut. It seemed like she put everything together because, um, you know, that, that was the surprising part. I knew that she had all of those elements. I knew she was going to be aggressive. I knew she had good jujitsu. I knew that she had aggressive striking. Um, but I thought I could catch some holes in between and she just, uh, yeah, she's a hard hitter. She's aggressive and she's a tough girl. You know, she's young. She's going to go far for sure. This is my favorite part about MMA. And these are my favorite interviews because this is such a crazy sport. You get so wrapped up with like your emotions and like, you've been doing this your entire life, Trisha, like since you're a little girl, like you've seen what the sport has and like the dark sides of it, the good sides of it. And throughout the entire journey, there's, there come situations like you're in right now. And I get so interested in how you maintain that mental strong, like you were undefeated as an amateur and which gets me into the next topic here. You're going to be fighting a girl that you've already beaten in your amateur, uh, in your amateur run. So, you know, how, how are you motivated for this fight? Uh, this is, is a really, amazing opportunity for me because like you said you know I did have a very smooth amateur start undefeated um you know got to fight for a belt defend the belt and then once my pro career started you know it's been a little rocky the last couple of years between not being able to get as many fights as I wanted fights falling through losing fights so you know now I'm having a record of of uh, one and three it's you know, it's not easy to find a fight and it's also not going to be easy for me to find a fight that's good for me at this point. You know, I definitely realized that. So um, this opportunity to fight somebody that I'm familiar with, uh, we had a very great fight the first time around, uh, but I did come out decisively, you know, one by arm bar. So it's not like it was some split decision or some weird thing like that. Like I've already won, but I know there's holes from my last fight. So I'm very excited having the confidence that I can be Angie, uh, that I have beat Angie and knowing the little mistakes that I've made in the past between my pro fights and with her that I can, you know, have plenty of time to fix now. So very, very happy about this. And for people out there, you're going to be fighting uh, around Christmas time, December 15th against Angela Jennings. So that's really exciting that you have, you know, you have a pretty good amount of time to get ready and you're training with some of the best teammates, uh, obviously in the game that everybody's very familiar with. I mean, I saw freaking trouble. You, I saw trouble following you around. Uh, Valerie yeah. Eternal was with you. Uh, she flew up here. What did you guys discuss uh, on, on the plane ride home? And, and what are you guys discussing right now with, you know, moving forward? Because she's obviously been through, you know, she's, she's a veteran in her own right. She's she's a huge mentor to me. Not only she's my friend, she's my training partner. She's like my, my big sister in the MMA world. And uh, she really you know, opened my eyes up. It was very discouraging. I'm not going to lie. You know, after my last fight, it was 
one of those moments that I, I know every fighter goes through where you're like, do I keep going or do I not, you know? And, um, you know, she really encouraged me and uh, Val has gone through, you know, obviously losing a title fight in the UFC and then going from that and kind of losing a couple more tough fights that maybe she should have won and then switching over to Bellator. And now she's, now she's fighting for the title in Hawaii. So on the same day, actually. Um, so, you know, she, she's been through that roller coaster throughout her career as well. She had a tough start in the beginning of her pro career too. So having that perspective, it's, it's very encouraging, not just her, but my other teammates. Um, you know, MMA, it's uh, <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's a roller coaster. So uh, it's, it's easy to stay motivated when you're winning, but when you lose or you lose a tough fight that you thought you should have won, uh, it can be tough for sure. But having somebody like Val uh, and, and my other teammates, it's, it's really, it's helpful a lot. And, and it's like that for people everywhere, whether you're at school and you're, you're so young that you really don't understand. And like, you see a lot of kids drop out of school. Like it gets really hard. The only thing you can do is if this is what makes you happy, you wake up every day motivated. There's nothing better in life than that. Like it, it, if it makes you feel alive and it's, it's in the long run, it's a sport, you know, people either lose or yeah. win. And I think what a great uh, little part that you brought up right there about going to Hawaii. What did you know about this? Because this is huge news. I mean, Bellator is beating out, you know, the UFC going down to Hawaii. This is going to be, this is going to be huge. So uh, when did you first hear about it? How, how long was this in the works for? Is this something that, you know, she's had her eye set on or like, what do you, what do you know if you can say anything? Well, I mean, I, I just found out about it when everybody else did, when yeah. Bellator announced it. But the only thing I can say is that when I was with her, uh, I was with her for her last fight, and um, we were in Temecula. And after the fight, I mean, they pretty much, they had them face off right there. I mean, they they were uh, interviewing both the girls, you know, and, and right away, Scott Cooker was talking to her. And and basically, you know, they, they brought up the idea, and almost like he was joking about it, like, yeah, maybe we'll have the title fight in Hawaii. But in the back of his head, I think he was serious about it too, like trying to figure out how to make it work. So um, I really enjoyed being at Bellator. I think uh, in the future, I would love to fight for Bellator. I really enjoyed meeting Scott Coker. Everybody there was was really awesome. So, I mean, I could see right away their wheels were turning of like, okay, how do we make this happen in Hawaii? Because let me tell you, in California, she had a huge, huge crowd. Like, I can't imagine what it's going to be in Hawaii. Obviously, Val's going into enemy territory, but... I mean, the energy in that place and that small little venue, it was insane, insane, all like Hawaii pride, you know, so it was very cool. That's really exciting. There's not many people that have been talking about it. I mean, this is huge for women's MMA to have them literally go there for for her down in Hawaii. Like that's that's huge news, like and other girls that that's doing it. So what have you been working on recently outside of MMA? I know that you got, you know, your little. Uh, business that you, you, you're doing. I saw you working some new designs and stuff like that for t-shirts. So how's that business life going on for you? How have you been handling it's going that? Crazy. Yeah, I'm really, really fortunate that, you know, through my years of martial arts and training people and teaching that I've kind of set up my life to where I'm fortunate enough where, especially since I'm not making money off of fighting yet, that I can make money and still train very hard twice a day and um, still train clients in between and still work on different business projects. So that's been really good. I'm going to start doing some online training, which is going to further help me have more time to rest and recover because there's only so many hours in the day that you can run around training clients and teaching classes. And it takes energy out of me as well. So I want to still be able to earn an income and, and increase my value and keep helping others. And if I have a, a platform that's accessible to everybody, it's going to be a lot easier. So that's what we're working on next. I mean, I forgot that you're down in Florida. The hurricanes come in. Uh, how are you handling all that? Uh, I mean, it's hurricane season. So that's kind of <laughs> like I've been down here for... 15 years now or something i had 14 years so it's it, you get kind of used to it like you kind of ignore it like oh okay they say it hurt so i mean nobody's really like i didn't even know that the hurricane was supposed to be coming to our area i don't know i'm, I'm in south florida like uh in the boca raton area oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i don't i don't think anything like threatening is coming in the near like next week or so to us but i could be wrong i don't know i don't i don't pay attention too much until until you start seeing the gas lines get long so <laughs> yeah it's crazy so down in Florida, I mean, a big thing down there is bodybuilding and stuff like that. Have you ever done like a, a competition or would you ever do something like that? Because I feel like you have the perfect physique, like you're, 
you're like the perfect person, like a good, like, um, you literally look like a model. You literally look like a model. I don't think anybody is going to deny that. Have you ever thought about doing competitions or stuff like that? Because, you know, you yeah. I, I have, you know, it's probably one of the most common things I get asked, like out in public, people are, oh, are, are you a bodybuilder? Do you compete? Are you training for a competition? Do you do CrossFit? Like constantly. Um, I don't know if, if I could ever, <laughs> you know, maybe things will change, who knows, but I, I can't picture myself, you know, walking out in the heels and doing the poses and stuff. <laughs> But I, I would consider doing a powerlifting competition for sure. I love weightlifting. Um, I'm competitive. So uh, maybe in the future when I'm done fighting, I, that's definitely a world I would explore, um, you know, some kind of strong woman competition or something. I don't know. But yeah, something in that realm. So ha have you been following like EBI lately? Have you been following along with all that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love watching those. The There's a lot of uh, new grappling tournaments, the uh, the high rollers, the Quintar, the EBIs, like a lot of cool stuff in the jiu-jitsu world. So I was thinking since we were talking about Hawaii, me and uh, my co-host James McSweeney were thinking that maybe BJ Penn should enroll in something like that over coming back to the Octagon and Would you be excited to see somebody like BJ Penn do an EBI over fighting the UFC again? Yeah, I, I think so. I think, uh, you know, I, I had a friend that kind of made the same comment of like, man, you know, wouldn't it be a lot better if BJ Penn and Ryan Hall were, to, were just doing a yeah. high level tournament? Like now we're going to have to see them try to strike with each other maybe. And maybe they go to the ground, but maybe they want to, you know, like, it, you know, they're both high level jujitsu people. So for a jujitsu fan, that's what we want to see. But um, yeah, I think that would be really cool. So last but not least, before we let you go, I really want to touch on what people can expect when they tune in to watch your fight or they go to your fight December 15th for XFN when you face off against Angela Jennings for the second time. What is everybody going to see that night? It's going to be a war. Uh, you know, there, there's really no... There's no real bad blood between me and Angie. You know, we had we had a great fight. We were both respectful to each other after the fight. But I think that there were some things that she said after our first fight, uh, just little things since we were amateurs. You know, oh, if there was two more minutes in the round, I could have won. Oh, if, if we didn't have shin guards, you know, I could have done it. That's kind of what I heard through the grapevine. So I want to make sure that this time around, again, there's no excuses. I win decisively. Um, you know, definitely going to get another finish, whether it's on the fee. I'm working a lot on my stand up right now, but I'm always working my jujitsu. I'll be doing Miami Open uh, in the next month and before I start really getting into the camp. So it's going to be a war. It's going to be a war. There's going to be a finish. Uh, I know she's going to come for blood. She wants that revenge. She wants that rematch. So it's it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be awesome. It's on Flow Grappling. So if you can't make it, you can still watch it. Uh, we're really excited that it's streaming on there. And, you know, if you can come watch it, it's plenty of time to get a plane ticket and uh, get a ticket and, you know, get down here. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Trisha. Last but not least, you know what we always like to do on the show. The floor is all yours if you have any sponsors, your social media tags, which if you're watching the video cast, you can see down below here. But just for the people listening to the podcast, where, where can they find you on social media? Um, you know, mostly I'm on Instagram, which is just my full name, at Trisha Cicero. Um, and yeah, I just want to thank my, mostly right now, you know, my teammates, my coaches, and and really, um, you know, my, my fans, my supporters like yourself. For, for really, it means a lot to still have that support uh, as an athlete, even when there's been some rocky moments in my career. For the people and my coaches, my friends that have like stood by me, supported me, I just want to thank everybody because that's what makes it possible to to keep going is you guys. So without your support, it's, it's you know, it wouldn't be possible. So thank you guys. <laughs> and we're looking forward to it. These are the most exciting times in somebody's career. So we're looking forward to see you get back on the train here and prove to the world that you're UFC material because we know that you are. This has been in your bloodline. It's in your DNA. So it, it's only a matter of time. You know how the sport is. And I want to thank you so much for joining us here today. Have a great day and be safe. Thank you so much. You too. There you guys go. Trisha Cicero joining us here on Pure Evil MMA. I want to thank everybody for tuning in live because I know that the UFC fights are going on right now on UFC Fight Pass. Kind of caught by surprise. I mean, let's start about 20 minutes ago on UFC Fight Pass. If you guys want to go check that out. I just feel, let me say one thing about this before I sign off here. It's been about a month now since we've lost UFC Pick'em. I really want to know the difference in people tuning in for the prelims because I feel like a big part of having something like UFC Pick'em, like there were thousands of people that were tuning in to watch 
the early prelims because they made their picks on it. They want to talk about it with their MMA friends and family and the community like we have at Pure Evil MMA. Now that's gone. So like the the motivation to want to see some of the early fights or to watch it on UFC Fight Pass. I'm not saying it's all riding on that, but for a good majority of people that I know and that I can attest to seeing it personally, people just not as motivated to want to watch the prelims or even as motivated to watch the fights because they don't have that attachment anymore to it that UFC pick them brought. And who knows what's going to happen. Maybe they'll have it added on the ESPN.com app or the ESPN Plus. But right now, I really believe that it's, even if it's just a couple of percent difference, the difference that it makes. And let's say, like, another plus side for UFC Pick'em was a lot of the guys on there for the prelims or fight pass prelims or even the main card that you weren't that familiar with. But you pick somebody, they win the fight, and then you see them a couple of months later, a couple of weeks later, they're back on the card. You're going to side with that guy again, and you're going to, you know, something's going to connect or you're going to get an interest for that guy because, you know, you, you have it on UFC Pick'em. It's bringing you that interaction, so to say. So let me know what you guys think about this. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's interview. I'm trying to do more live interviews for everybody. I know that we got a whole bunch of new subscribers here on YouTube and also on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, Stitcher, Podomatic, you name it. So I want to thank you guys so much. If you're watching on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Share this interview to your Twitter or Facebook page. Let people know about us. That is the only way that we're going to grow. If you guys drop a comment down below, that also will help. YouTube will recommend us to somebody else that uh, is out there that is watching the same stuff that you guys are watching. It's just kind of weird the way that YouTube works, and it would mean a lot. Also, guys, a reminder, we're doing a giveaway on iTunes. All you got to do is leave a review, take a screenshot of that review, and send it to me on Twitter or Instagram at PureEvilMMA underscore or on Twitter at evil under dash echo. That's E V I L underscore E C C O. We just released episode 150 of Pure Evil on May. So big celebration for that. Thank you to all of our day one people. Thank you to all of our new listeners. We also have some new merch dropping because it's almost my favorite month of the year. That's right. Halloween is just a couple of weeks away. And I have something very special for everybody. A little hint. There's some ghost stories inside the MMA community, whether it's fighters whether it's uh, media members, even fans, like even supporters of Pure Evil MMA. If you guys have a ghost story, let me know about it. Even if you just want to type it up or pre-record it and send it to me in an email or something like that, I want you to come on here and share your story with the entire community. That is what I'm looking forward to for October. I always look forward to the ghost stories, American Horror Story, which I'll admit I have not watched yet. The new season of American Horror Story, I'm kind of ashamed to admit. But I will catch up on it. Last but not least, guys, I'm Evil Eddie from Pure Evil MMA, my MMA news.com. I want to thank Trish and Sarah so much for joining us here today from Coconut Creek, Florida. I'm American top team train alongside Bella Returno and some of the bigger names out there, like Amanda Nunez, you want a young Jay Jack, you name it. It's going down at ATZ. Guys, I'm Evil Eddie from Pure Evil MMA, my MMA news.com. Remember, without evil, there's no purity. Behave yourselves. Oh, I'm gonna be going on Twitter right now. I'm gonna be keeping up with, uh, keeping up with obviously the UFC fights. But tonight, guys, I am going to Foxwoods Resort Casino to cover a line fight, and you guys can watch it live on FlowCombat.com. If you aren't subscribed to FlowCombat.com, you're missing out on a lot of great performances, a lot of great fights, even grappling stuff like that. They have it all. FlowCombat.com. Get your subscription today. They're not paying me, trust me, they're not paying me. But Lion Fight has so much to offer, so many great young up and coming fighters. You've heard them here on Pure Evil MMA. Steve Walker is going to be going up against Kristoff uh, uh, tonight. Zeal. Kristoff versus Steve Walker. And I've always said it Steve Walker reminds me of a young up and coming Anderson Silva. He's going to be defending his title tonight, and this is going to be. The toughest matchup of his entire career, guys. I cannot wait to see what unravels tonight. We also got Yayo from Team Yayo represent. We uh, we actually did a fight party with Team Yayo. He had me come all the way out to Rhode Island to host at Fuego Fuego, a Latin nightclub. We did the podcast in the uh, in the VIP room, 
there were people literally surrounding us, had their phones out taking pictures while we're doing the pot. It was one of the coolest moments of my life. So definitely awesome. So shout out to Yayo, represent. Man. Good times, good times. We need to get more of that going. Shout out to Fuego, Fuego. That was such a balling night. I mean, that that was that, that was something else, and I really have my fingers crossed. We even tried freaking veg and white. One of our supporters here, shout out to Big Paz, sent us a bottle of Vegemite from down under in Australia. Me, Yayo, and Yayo's beauty stylist <laughs> tried it. Well, she actually pretended to try it and then admitted that she really didn't, which is smart of her. I literally almost vomited. Now, the video is a little hard for you guys to hear, but I did upload that just that clip on my Instagram page, and you guys will laugh your ass off. If you want to go check that out on Instagram at MMA underscore. Guys, I'm checking out. Get ready for the post show tonight for Lion Fight and also the updates. Guys, I'm Evil Lady from Pure Evil MMA. My MMA news.com. Remember, without evil, there's no purity. Behave yourselves.